Welcome everybody to another session in our Women Lead Online Forums brought to you by Connecting Women of Influence. I'm Patty Vargas and I'm your host today. And today we have a subject matter smarty pants in the hot seat who was willing to say, go ahead, ask me anything, you can't scare me. And our session today is gonna last for just under an hour. If you've joined with video, you'll be able to see our guest and attendees alike. Questions and comments are always welcome. If you have something you'd like to contribute anonymously, just put it in the chat to me and I'd be happy to share it for you. And our topic today is if you don't have a retirement plan, the state of California has one for you. And I am really excited to introduce um, my guest today, Michelle Farrell. And I'll tell you what, that, that title is frightening. It's kind of like, you know, when Reagan said the most frightening words are, you know, I'm from the government and I'm here to help. So that title right, you know, alone should be pretty scary. But let me tell you about Michelle. Michelle Farrell has been in the insurance industry for over 15 years. She made the transition to the financial services side when her mom, who had been left behind by the traditional industry, had to medically retire with no retirement to speak of. So Michelle was searching for purpose and she knew that this was where she could really make an impact and a difference in people's lives. And one of the many reasons that she chooses to work with the financial architects is because they are non-captive, which means she doesn't have any limit to the number of companies or the range of companies that she can reach out to for solutions for her clients. And Michelle's passion is helping women and especially entrepreneurs create wealth and reach higher levels of success. So without further ado, let me introduce you and welcome Michelle jo and take it away, it's all yours. Thanks Patty, I um, thank you for having me as a guest today. I am really excited to talk a little bit more about this topic. It's, um, you know, as women, uh, especially we are so far behind the eight ball. So we're going to talk about a little bit about retirement. Um, who here is a business owner? Let me just ask that question. Who owns their own business? Like Christine, Elizabeth, I know Nicole does, um, Adrienne does. So everybody here is a business owner. How many of you guys have a retirement plan set up with like either a 401k, a simple or a SEP IRA? Do you guys have that set up yet? Okay, good. Um, because what is happening is the state of California is, is saying, you know what, we're finding way too many people that don't have enough retirement income saved up. So we're going to force your hand a little bit. And if we know how the government works, especially the state of California, do we want them to be the ones that are making our retirement decisions? I know I don't want them to. So my, my, purpose today is to kind of educate you about what California has rolled out, what's called Cal Savers, and what other options we have as business owners to go forward to. And, and if you're not, if you're watching this and you're not a business owner and you're an employee, this is something you want to think about. Do I want to, do I want to be an employee of a company that offers Cal Savers versus a privately ran 401k, 403b, and we'll go into more of that later. Um, so I want to tell you a little bit, my Patty kind of touched on it. Um, I came into this business with a huge passion for educating people. My mom uh, had some money in the bank, some money with a big brokerage firm, um, and the, the broker on the other side was more concerned about his retirement than my mom's. Uh, made a really bad investment um, suggestion to her. She followed it and ended up basically wiping out her retirement in her mid fifties. And she just kind of had the mentality, well, I'll just, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll work until I die. Well, at age 65, her body said, nope, sorry, you're not going to be able to work anymore. Um, and I, I come across that a lot with clients. I'm like, well, when do you want to retire? The, the, the answers are, I want to retire today or I'm never going to retire. <laughs> and so maybe you're like myself who always wants to, like I always want, I can't see myself retiring, but I want to have the option to. Who, who here wants to have the option to retire and say, I don't want to work anymore, right? Um, so that's why, that's why I got into this business to help people not follow my mom's path. She retired with $9,000 in her 401k, what lasted 
Yeah, last to her about four months. Um, and then her social security tax were under $1,300 a month. And so here I came and now I'm her financial provider and her caregiver. So it's really important to make sure you know what your, your really got saved up for retirement. Um, women, and as, as women, we are farther behind the eight ball for a few reasons. Number one, in corporate America, we make 80 cents-ish to the dollar of every man. So we make less, which means that we are able to save less, especially if there's an employer contribution. Um, a lot of women take time out to have babies, take home, you know, maybe they miss, you know, five, 10 years of prime working time because they're staying home with the kids um, or multiple kids. Sometimes you're missing work because you're taking care of your parents. Um, that's, you know, I'm blessed. I have a flexible job where I could, you know, get, I could take care of my mom. I need a couple of days off. Um, but when I was employee, that was a, that was a big strain. I had to worry about taking um, time off to take care of my mom, which means if I wasn't money, earning money, that I, that means I wasn't earning money to save. And so for all of these reasons, we've got to make sure that we are really put, kind of putting our head down and doing what we need to do to, to save for retirement. So as I was kind of preparing for this, I was looking at some different numbers and T. Rowe Price came up with a, a um, study that said if you if you say 15% of your income on a yearly basis you should be able to hit your retirement um, your retirement goal however the average person is only saving 8.8% of their income which means they're gonna fall very very short of what they're supposed to retire with so the, because of all of these reasons Cal Savers is just like hey Cal State of California said hey let's help Let's help you save for retirement. Mm -hmm. um, but just as we know, the state of California doesn't really belong in the retirement plan. It's the state treasurer that is running the program along with a private sector um, financial firm, which is Wells Fargo. Well, Wells Fargo has done a lot of not so nice stuff lately. And so would you wanna, would you wanna be stuck having Wells Fargo manage your retirement. So basically what CalSavers is, is like, they're, they're like, we're gonna set you up a Roth account. So who here besides Nicole, who here knows the three tax boxes of how money is invested? Yeah. Patty, you're kind of shaking your head. So it's pre-tax, after tax, uh, and I don't know what the third one is. Always tax. Always tax. <laughs> So there's, so there's really three tax boxes that Uncle Sam says we're going to tax your investments. So you have the first one we call tax now, which means you paid income tax on the money that you're going to invest. You put the money into either a savings account, stocks, bonds, mutual funds. Um, it's it's your, basically your liquid investments, money that's not tagged for retirement. What happens is you could get, end up paying a capital gains tax every single year or when you go to pull that money out, you're paying taxes on it again. Now you're not paying an income tax, so the taxes are gonna be a little bit less, but you are paying taxes on that. Why is that important? Well, if you're saving for a long-term investment, your money doesn't have the opportunity to grow as much because you're taking a little bit of out, out of that, a little bit out every year to pay taxes. So you don't get as much compounding interest um, power as you would like to if you're saving for like retirement or college savings or something like that. And then we've got our tax deferred. And this is where people think Uncle Sam is their buddy because they're like, wait, I could save for my retirement today and I don't have to pay taxes on it. You're not even going to tax me as the money grows year after year. But when I go to pull that money out in retirement, I then I have to pay income taxes on that. Um, so there, this could be a good bucket if you are in a higher tax bracket, you need some tax relief. If your employer is um, paying you or is matching some, if you're contributing to your 401k, hey, it's free money, go ahead and let them, ta you know, let them tax it. There's also a couple of rules that are very important. Um, you have a 59 and a half rule. Does anybody know what that is? I recall correctly, that's the lowest age bracket that you can pull money out of your 
your 401k and not be penalized per se. Is that correct? That is correct. Um, and, and then there's a 72 rule. Um, it used to be 70 and a half, but now the 72 rule. Does anybody know what that is? Mm -hmm. That's the civil, well, in that situation, it's said, well, I thought it was, seven, it was 72 now, right? And yep. that's when you can take a percentage of your 401k, pull it out, but you're going to pay taxes. You're not penalized, but you still have to pay the tax, right? No, it's actually, it, you have to take what's called an RMD, a required minimum right. distribution, which is going to be about now it's 72. It's somewhere going to probably somewhere between three and a half and 4% of your money that you're going to have to take out every single year. And if you don't take that out, what's going to happen is they are going to say that year you were supposed to take out $20,000 and you didn't, you, you didn't, weren't working with a financial professional. You didn't have a CPA to tell you to make sure you take your money out. You ignored the letters that your financial institution sent you to say, Hey, take this money out. And you just, you just blew it. And now you're going to file your taxes. Well, they're going to say, the IRS is going to say, guess what? You owe us a 50% penalty. So now you're since giving them $10,000 um, of your $20,000 that you worked really hard for. And they're, and they're also going to charge you taxes on the 20 per, that 20,000. So out of that, you're going to get to keep like five. So it's really important to know what that particular tax bucket is, how it's going to not only be taxed today, but throughout your retirement. And then the last bucket we call the, you know, tax never, um, I call it the one and done because you do pay taxes in that money. It's you pay the income, you, put, you invest in it, you pay taxes on it but you never pay tax, well, almost always, you never pay taxes on it again. And those are like your Roth IRAs, cash value, life insurance, municipal bonds, uh, college savings. And so what's great about that is it grows year after year after you're tax free, but when you go to pull it out as income, you don't have to pay taxes on it anymore, which is really, really awesome. Um, so Cal Savers is like, well, let's go ahead and treat this, this as a Roth IRA. So an IRA is an individual retirement agreement, and you have your traditional, which falls in the tax deferred bucket, and then you have the tax one and done, or the Roth IRA, where you're paying taxes on the money you invest into it. So state of California is like, let's grow this income tax-free, but they're setting it up as a Roth IRA. So any IRA is going to have some contribution limits. You're going to have either a $6,000 lim limit that you can contribute either on the traditional or the Roth side, um, or $7,000 if you're over 50. So that means that if you earn more than $75,000 and you are putting in the 5% the that they tag for your retirement through CalSavers, that means you've over contributed and now you're going to pay a penalty because you don't have anybody, nobody's monitoring how much you have. Or maybe you're a very smart investor and you set up your own Roth and you're putting in $300 a month with your own financial advisor and then you're automatically put into Cal Savers because you don't realize that that same contribution goes into one place. So now you've over contributed. Or maybe you, you both, you're, you and your partner, your spouse, you're both really great earners. You both make over a hundred thousand dollars a year. Well, Roth, you have an income maximum that you could put into it. So if you earn more than two about two hundred thousand dollars, you can't put in any money into a Roth. Well, now you just save money into a Roth. Now you're getting penalized. So, and these aren't educations that educational stuff that people that are enrolling into CalSavers is being told because the employer has no fiduciary responsibility, which is one of the reasons why employers love it. But the state of California is not going to go out and educate this, you know, Wells Fargo isn't going to say, Hey, I just saw, you know, you set up a Cal Savers uh, account with us. Let me educate what a Roth IRA is. Um, most people are just going to, just going to, most people doesn't matter if it's with Cal Savers or 401k or 403b, they're going to say, yes, I want it. And then they don't look at it again. They have no idea what they're invested in. They have no, I, a lot of times they don't even know how much money, uh, what percentage of their paycheck is going into their 401k every month, right? 
um, they don't even take a second look at it. And so the, the last thing I wanna talk about is Cal Savers, as you said, is with Wells Fargo. And so their um, investment platform is called State Street. And they have what's called a target, um, a target retirement fund, which basically they look at your age and say, what year are you turning 67, which is most people's full retirement age. And then they're gonna match you up. So let's say you are 35, and um, today's 2020, so in 30 years, you're going to retire, so they'll put you on a target date of 2050, and that's about it. That's about the extent of your retire of your investment options you get. They have a couple of conservative a money market, a couple bond funds, um, but that's all. Like, wouldn't you want some more choices when it comes to your retirement? Wouldn't you want to be diversified? Mm -hmm. I'm seeing a lot of head shake. Um, because that's one of the, the other biggest difference between a 401k, a SEP or IRA, a simple IRA, which I'll talk a little bit more in detail about, is you don't have any investment options when it comes to Cal Savers. So who needs to be enrolled in, well, actually, let me stop. Does anybody have any questions? I knew I just like threw a lot of information at you guys. Um, I tend to just get excited and go, I apologize. Does anybody have any questions? I have one. So if you're turning, if you're, okay, before it was 70, that you could actually, you're supposed to take a three and a half, four percent of your IRA. Now it's changed to what, 72, you said? 72. 72. So what happens to people that are approaching 70 or can you take it out earlier? What's, what's the, what's the, I guess my question is, what's the benefit of waiting until 72? No, so they want, the IRS actually wants you to start taking your money out at 59 and a half because they start collecting taxes then. They, what they want is if you turn 72 and you haven't touched your money, they're like, we want to get paid. Okay. So you're going you're gonna to take a minimum distribution or we're going to penalize you because remember, you haven't been taxed on any of this money yet. The IRS is like, it's time to pay the piper. So it's like the 72 is a cap. Yeah, uh, so, yeah, it's a, it's, whatever it is, yeah, I call it's, it a cap. In other words, you have to, you're mandated to take money and withdraw X dollars or percentage, or else you're penalized yeah. for not doing it. So it behooves you between 59 and 72 to either take it or take it by no later than 72. Absolutely. Absolutely. So most people take, start taking it usually somewhere between 65 and 70. Um, and what's really important is if you have a well diversified portfolio, I'm going to go a little off topic, is you want to figure out what, what's the best bucket to start taking it from. Do I want to start taking it from my tax deferred bucket? Or do I want to start taking it on my tax never bucket? Or do maybe I have some in my tax now bucket? Do I want to maybe live off of that? So you really want to work with a financial advisor to see, okay, who, where's the best rate of return coming from? Um, you know, do I have any penalties for taking money out of early of a, a, a particular product? Um, so it's important to kind of set up a strategy instead of just saying, I'm just going to take out of this one first. I'm going to take one out of this one second. I generally recommend people take out of the tax deferred mm -hmm. first because you're getting taxed on that. So I would rather have my tax never grow the most. So I'll leave that alone as long as I can to not touch it. And then I'll take money out of the tax deferred. Um, but you should have different kind of different investment vehicles that you have your retirement in. It shouldn't be all left in right. an IRA or all left with your pre previous company or all in an annuity. It should be a blend of, of all of the above because they all have different, they're all really good things and you just got to find out what works best for you. So I usually do a couple of different options for the clients because they have different needs at different times in their life too. Thank you. You're welcome. Did that answer your question, Liz? I know I went off on a yeah. little tangent. Yeah. No, 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 no. You, it's scare. <laughs> <Very good. laughs> so Michelle, I wanted to ask, did you say that if you have, let's say you have two Roth IRAs and you're not paying attention to what's going on with them, if you over that the two of them are essentially going into you know for lack of a better word one Roth IRA bucket so if you over contribute then you'll get penalized is that Correct. what you said 
Yeah. Right. Okay. So if you're married, you you get two different buckets. They just have to be in each other's name. So you got, you know, say we got, you know, you, Patty, and then um, Tony, you each could have your own Roth bucket. So you each can contribute up to seven seven thousand mm-hmm. um, dollars together um, or six thousand if you're under the age of 50. So that'd be twelve thousand combined. But so you want to you want to, you know, but you got to have them in each other's. You have to have them in the right name. Yeah. Um, but if so, I worked for a company that set up a uh, Cal Savers and it was a Roth IRA, I'd have to be careful of how much am I putting in my own and how much am I putting in that one? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. That's what I thought you said. Yeah. And, and you have a lot of these, these like these robo advisors now, like Robin Hood, Acorn, that kind of stuff, where you may set up a Roth IRA and you're putting, say, 50 bucks a month into it. You may end up accidentally going over your Roth because you have no, you, again, you, you're in a robo advisor, so you're not getting any advice. You're not really know what you're setting yourself up into. And then again, you've got another investment vehicle that you're not t- having anybody talk to you about, which is really, really scary. Yeah. Um, and it's, you know, it's great that you need it, that they're kind of forcing your hand to start saving. Um, on the flip side, if you're not saving properly, what kind of what's, kind of what's the point? Um, I don't want to say what's the point, but you want to maximize your dollar. Um, I know I work really hard for my money. I know everybody in this call works really hard for your, your money. So let's make sure we're maximizing it and, and getting the best bang for your buck. Um, so I threw out a couple of other retirement options out there. So let's say you, um, say you're kind of like myself. I have no employees. Um, I work for myself. I've got a corporation, either a, an S or a C corp. Most of us, if we have anything, will probably be an S corp, um, maybe an LLC, but you do need to have an S or a C corp and you want to start a 401k, you can start a 401k all by yourself. It's called a self solo 401k. What that does is you can set it up as a traditional one where you get the tax deductions um, this year, or you can get the tax deferral and you can set up as a Roth IRA. So you still have options on if you're setting up a 401k. It doesn't matter if it's the traditional or the Roth. You and what happens is you actually have $19,500 you can contribute to it, plus an extra $1,000 for anybody that's over the age 50. Um, and then if you have employees, you have some options um, with being able to actually do what's called contributions or a match. So you can either say, I'm going to give everybody like a 3%. And what this does, it makes sure it's called, um, it's really called a, a safe harbor. And basically what they're doing is making sure that everybody is being treated equally in the retirement stage. They don't want the, the lower, what they call rank and file, kind of your, your minimum wage or your lowest earners to be priced out of or not have the ability to contribute to a 401k plan. So they're like, everybody's going to get 3%. What, what that's going to do is going to open up how much you could contribute as a business owner. Um, some other options are a SEP IRA, um, or a simple IRA and it's still, you get pre-tax, you don't get the option of a Roth. So it's all pre-tax dollars. Um, with the SEP IRA, you have some flexible contributions. Um, but it's, it's, you have to be equal across the board. So, um, that gives, that, that takes away some of your flexibility. And then with your simple IRA, Um, You don't have to do any tax filings. It's really simple. It's really low cost. Um, But you only could do 13,500 in contributions. So, you know, what's the best one for you? It that really kind of depends on where you want to where you are with your business now what your income is. um, Where do you see your business in, you know, the next three years, five years, 10 years, if you're like, man, you know, like Christine, you're like, man, it's just my husband and I, but we're going to take this and we're going to start, you know, we're going to start hiring people in the next, you know, five, 10 years where you want to have, you know, 
30, 50, 100 employees, well, that's going to shift where we, what plan we want to choose for you. So we have some additional options to add on. Um, so going back to CalSAVERS, CalSAVERS costs the employer zero dollars. They just have to manage the deduction and they have to help enroll everybody, which is why some people are like, well, okay, you know, that's cool. I don't have to really put much thought and effort into it. Um, you just have to manage enrolling everybody, which is one of the, there's two biggest headaches that people have when it comes to setting up a 401k plan or any kind of retirement plan. It's the time involved in getting people enrolled and it's the cost involved. So the other um, costs that some of the costs are involved are you have administration fees, you got what are called TPA fees, and it's basically to make sure everything is ERISA, which is your Retirement Act um, regulations. Make sure that everybody is in um, accordance with that. Make sure your taxes are done correctly. Make sure everybody's being treated fairly. Um, so I just recently did a, a quote for somebody with a company that has 130 employees, and their average cost where it's going to be about five thousand dollars their administrative cost mm -hmm. what's really cool is if you've never set up a retirement plan or it's been three years since you've done it you could get up to a five thousand dollar startup credit for your first three years as a business so you'll get a tax credit on that mm -hmm. so they really want you to take ownership <laughs> and they i mean the irs and the government really wants you to take ownership of setting up retirement for you um what are some of the other costs well, one of the things I didn't talk about on the Cal Savers is their average investment fee that comes out of your daily balance or your average daily balance is going to be about 1%. That's your annual. I'm sorry. Let me back that up. Jeez. Um, so it's going to be a one, about 1% 1 annually that it's, you're going to have to pay to have somebody manage your portfolio. Guess how much it's going to be approximately on a 401k or a SEP IRA? It's going to be about the same. It may be a little bit more depending on your investment opportunities. Um, so you're not really saving any money with Cal Savers when it comes to the investment, um, but you're going to have a ton more options. And I know as a as a just a human being, I want options. Um, you tell me what I have to do, and I'm like, no, I don't. Um, <laughs> Um, you know, and then you get some of the tax savings with that. Like I talked about the tax credit. Um, let's say that we're going to contribute 3% to every employee. Well, guess what? That's a tax deduction right there. Um, so now you're bringing your corporation's taxable income down, which means would you, so the question is, is would you rather pay Uncle Sam or yourself or your employees? So Michelle, who, um, let me stop you for just a second. Yeah. What size of a company has to do this? Does every company in California have to do this? Almost every company in California will eventually have to do this. So by September 30th of this year, if you have over a hundred employees, you're going to have to get um, enrolled into CalSAVERS or have your own private 401k mm -hmm. um, or a retirement plan. There's a big penalty if you don't. Um, if you don't, if you're not in um, compliance within the first 90 days, it's $250 per employee. Wow. If you're not in compliance after 180 days, it's another $500 fine per employee. Wow. Um, so by June 30th of 2021, if you have 50 or more employees, you have to have this enrolled. And then by June 30th of um, 2022, if you have five employees, um, you're going to have to have something like this. Or you're going to have either have Cal Savers or a, your own retirement plan. Five employees. Five employees. So that's going to be, that's going to be like your small, like retail shops, your small, excuse me, your, your small restaurants, bars. They have a lot of turnover, so they don't want to necessarily do that. What's great with a 401k plan is you could say, okay, you have to work so many hours. Usually you have to work more than part-time hours to be able to qualify to participate in the 401k. You could have a, um, um, a vesting period, which means that 
you don't get anything the first year and you build it out for six years where you get 20% of whatever the employer contributes. Um, let's say, let's say this company puts in say a thousand dollars towards say Liz's 401k. And after three years, she decides to, to leave. She's going to go, um, you know, she's going to go join Kay on her safari. Um, <laughs> and so she's like, I'm out of here. And so the, the thousand dollars the employer put in, she's only what's called partially invested. So Liz gets 40% because she got nothing the first year. This, the first or year two, she got 20%. Year three, now she's got 40%. So Liz gets to take 400 of that. The other 600 goes into back into the plan um, to help pay for the plan, the plan management and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so you have some flexibility there where you're like, man, I've got some high turnover. Maybe you have a construction job or a manufacturing job or a warehouse where you have, you have some more, you have higher turnover. Well, this is one of the ways to be able to kind of counteract that. Because people are like, man, I've, I've got, I don't want to necessarily quit for this other job that's only going to pay me 50 cents more an hour. Um, what it's going to do is going to help you retain your employees. And we know if you retain your employees, let's go, that's another cost. If you have, you have, say, um, Bob and Mike that are, are working for the same, for, or do the same thing, and, um, and they have the option of, or just said Bob, he has the option of going to um, a company that has a 401k, that has group health insurance, you know, has some benefits. And then he has a company that doesn't have any of that stuff. What, what job do you think he's going to take? Mm -hmm. Even if he has to pay for all, for all of it, the employer doesn't match because he's got the ability to be able to do that stuff. Because he's like, man, these people care about me. They want to make sure I'm able to retire, that kind of stuff. So it helps with employee retention. Um, because we all know how expensive it is to train a brand new employee, yeah. like how many hours it takes, um, how much money it goes into investing to onboarding them, setting them up with payroll, um, you know, getting them, all of that, cost, that kind of stuff costs thousands of dollars per employee. And so if you have somebody that you're willing, that are, you're able to keep long term, that's a, that's a cost savings right there. And then also there's some, some things you could do once you have the 401k is set up profit sharing. So mm -hmm. let's say you're, you're in a, like a um, manufacturing um, thing and you happen to manufacture masks this year. And so your profit is way up here. You're like, man, I want to give this back to some of my employees. I could do profit sharing and you could contribute to them some of that stuff where they're able to put it towards the retirement. You get the tax deduction. The employee does have to pay for it as a um, as income, um, or it the taxes get deferred. So there are so many different things that you could do with re different retirement plans based on what kind of company you have and how many employees you have. It makes so much sense to at least sit down with a professional to find out should I do Cal Savers or should I should I invest a little bit more back into my business for my retirement and my employees' retirement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Any questions, ladies? Nicole, I know you're off camera, but did you have anything to, to add to this? You're, you're muted. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, you're doing a great job. It's a, it's a lot of information that people need to have. And as you and I both know, over and over and over hearing this from reputation, talking to um, to a professional, to one of us, to, to go talk to Michelle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Don't be afraid to ask questions. She's great at telling you what you need to hear in a language you can understand. That's what I think we both appreciate about each other, how we work as women with other women and with families of men as well, but mostly for women. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks. You're Michelle, Thank I, you. I have a question for you. What prompted the state of California to do this? Do you, do you know anything of the legislation that came out and what was the, what was behind it? No, I think, I think part of it is they saw Oregon and Connecticut doing it. And um, I think part of it is, you know, the study where 
you should be saving 15% of your income and the average person is saving 8.8%. My guess is they probably are noticing with the baby boomers rising, and this is just my kind of my guesstimate, mm -hmm. how much more baby boomers are needing to qualify for Medi-Cal as, as well as Medicare um, because they don't have enough retirement uh, income coming in to help pay for their health benefits, mm -hmm. um, the additional benefits that you need for, for Medicare. Um, probably the, just the, the burden it is on the state to, to have state run programs if you're not properly prepared. Wow. Okay. Um, that, that average means, you know, they're taking all the money being saved and coming up with an average. That doesn't mean the average person is saving 8.8%. Yes. There's a small percentage of people saving 15% and a huge percentage of people saving 5%. Right, four mm -hmm. percent or less or nothing. It's or scary nothing. what yeah. we see. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna grab my notebook really quick. So they, according to Investopedia, like, like the average sixty to sixty-nine year old only has one hundred and eighty-two thousand dollars in retirement. Sorry, sixty to what? The yeah, average 60 to 69 year old. So if you're in, in, in your 60s, the yeah. average retirement balance is $182,000. Mm, that's so, scary. Right? Very that's scary. so, so scary. And, and you know, to add to that too, I remember in 2008, and also I would imagine now too, I think what's happening when people panic and they've lost their job and they don't have any savings, they're actually going to their 401. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have a very dear friend who overextended herself, leveraged, bought had three pieces of property, ended up losing. One was upside down and ended up losing her two homes plus her condo in Brentwood. And then she had to dip into her, um, her four. She, I mean, it's, it's amazing what people will do, just panicking and not waiting it out and, you know, not listening to a financial advisor saying, look, this is, you, you have to write this out, you know, with regards to the investments and mm -hmm. stocks and everything. It's just, it's scary though. We're in scary times right now. And I just don't know how, how are people managing that are really panicking about this and have a few dollars, so to speak, in the 401. What's happening with that? Mm -hmm. No, you're absolutely right. Um, especially with the, um, the, the act that just came out, I'm just, I think it was the CARE Act, where they're like, we won't, we will, you know, you can take $100,000 out of your 401k without it's your 10% penalty. I can't tell you how many people I've had reach out to me like, oh, should I do this? I'm like, no, yeah. you know, and like, unless you're about to lose your house, you're, you're not going to have electricity on because what happens is not only do you take that money out? You're losing the compounding interest of it, which is, um, who here knows the rule of 72? Mm -hmm. I mean, Albert Einstein calls it the eighth wonder of the world, but in school they teach us about the pyramids and the Nile, but they don't teach us about the thing that we're going to use every single day, which is how money grows. Right. So um, for those that don't know it, the rule of 72 is basically how many years it's going to take for your investment to double based on the interest rate that's being paid or earned or on the flip side if you have debt how your debt is going to accrue based on the interest rate mm -hmm. so let's say you have a an average 401k will earn nine percent so you take 72 divide it by nine every eight years that means your money should double based on the rule of 72 what's important to know about that is if you're not in the right investments so we're going to by Nicole, um, if you're not in the right investments, then you're and if you take that money out. You have less of that money to double every single eight years or so, mm -hmm. which is, you know, think about, I, I, I'll even use myself as a personal example, um, not even talking about the CARES Act, but you're like, oh, it's only $30,000 or and it's only $15,000. I'm just going to, I'm just going to cash it out because you're, you're only paying you know, maybe a thousand, two thousand dollars in taxes. You're not right. taking. You're not taking a lot of taxes. But what happens is you're losing the the power of compounding interest. So by the time I was thirty, I cashed out two four hundred one k's, probably about eighty thousand dollars worth. Well, I'm forty five now. That money should have 
doubled at least twice, so it should have been at least $240,000, and I retire in another 20 years, there's a really great chance that could have been a million dollars without me even contributing anything more to it, but I cashed it out. Mm-hmm. versus, oh, let me save 10% on my credit card debt. Well, your credit cards aren't going to pay for you to be able to live in retirement. Mm-hmm. So one of the things, one of the first things I teach my clients is you've got to pay yourself first, either as an, even if you're an employee or a business owner, putting into your retirement fund is paying yourself first. Because at the end of the day, you are the only person you could count on to be there for you. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. Or I get all passionate and fired up about this yeah, stuff. That's really, yeah, very important. Yeah. Well, this is this is really really good information. Um, do, yeah. Does anybody else have any questions, Christine or Adrienne? Do you guys have any questions for Michelle? I have to be honest. We have one excellent job here, so I've been so, I've been only like half listening, so I'm gonna have to watch the recording because this was clearly a ton of information that is new, especially about this California plan and how it might fit into what we already have. Mm -hmm. So thank you for this. This was even the portion I was able to hear was really, really eye opening. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Well, that's the good thing about recording these is that, you know, whatever we, we lose because it is so much information, you can always listen back to it again. I, you know, I was thinking about what you said, Michelle, about losing that compounding capability because you took it out it's also how long it took you to save that amount of money you know and we it might have taken you years to save that 10 grand and then you just take it out to you know to do whatever i mean people don't usually take it out for frivolous reasons but you take it out for maybe not not fully thought through reasons yeah absolutely yeah one of my close friends right now she's like should i shade should I empty out my, and she has a Roth even, she's like, should I empty out my Roth so I could go buy furniture from our indie place? I'm like, no, go get a credit card because you probably could get 0% interest for the next 12 to 24 months. And then you just make sure you pay it off. Right. Right. Um, And so, yeah, it's just, you know, your retirement, like setting yourself up for retirement is one of the biggest gifts you could give yourself. Yes. Well, Michelle, this has been awesome. And um, like I said, when you first started talking about CalPERS, it was like, wow, that just sounds really scary. So it's good that, you know, that we've got some information um, about that. So it looks, Christine, it looks like you just put a question in, into the chat. Um, can you discuss a little more about the $5,000 tax credit that companies can get for setting up a retirement plan? Um, it's, to my knowledge, and I'm not a tax professional, but to my knowledge, it's it's any kind of qualified retirement plan. So it could be a 401k, a SEP, or a simple IRA um, that you could get up to a $5,000 credit. Now, it may not take $5,000 to get a retirement plan set up. Um, if it's just for a couple people, the first year might be only $700 to $1,000. Mm-hmm. Um, so you may get a portion of that um, I think, I believe it's 50% up to $500 or $5,000 is the actual. Um, so you have a $1,000 setup fee then you get a $500 tax credit. Mm-hmm. Good. That's good. Yeah, so people are, you know, companies are being incentivized to set up some sort of retirement option for, for their employees and for themselves and so forth. Yeah, absolutely. Did that answer your question, Christine? Good. All right. Well, Michelle, I want to thank you again. Any last comments that you want to make or um, anything else you want to share with us before we wrap up today? Yeah, if anybody has any, you know, any questions about any of the stuff that I covered or you just want to have a, a, you know, a consultation, um, I don't charge anything to have an initial conversation with you. Um, I generally don't charge anything to have a, to do a plan for you. Um, so if you have any questions, you know, you could always reach out to me. Um, I'm here via phone or email. Um, and I would love just to have that conversation to help you out. Um, even if you just want to get a second opinion based on whatever your, your first advisor told you, um, I'm always going to tell you to, to do whatever in your best interest. 
regardless if that means running a business with me or not. If it means to, to stick with a plan you're already doing, um, then I'm going to tell you to stick with that plan because my job is to do what's in your best interest. So what's your phone number? Where can people reach you? That's a great question. Nine, my number is 909-367-3208. And my email is Michelle with one L. So M-I-C-H-E-L-E at T as in Tom, F as in Frank, A, W, M as in Mary, dot com. And I'll throw that in the chat as well for you ladies. Okay, great. Well, Michelle, thanks again. This has been so informative, um, so enlightening. And it, it always is when we talk to you about, you know, all of the, all things financial and um, all things intricate and crazy, right? Yep. <laughs> So I want to thank all of you that joined us live, as well as those that will be listening to this recording after the fact. Um, we are here, you know, usually every week, every other week with some sort of, of fabulous information for you and, and some subject matter smarty pants sitting in the hot seat that's willing to share their expertise with you. So keep a lookout um, on Facebook and on our website for the next things that are upcoming. And again, Michelle, thanks so much for taking so much of your valuable time to be with us today. And thank you for having me on the, the Zoom. Bye now. Bye.